principal goal was to show Israel in a really nice light to the outside world. The peak of Mount Negev. Picks off, but now it's time. If you're going to have a dig, it's now. And somebody is the ghost. Go, go. We're honored to be joined by Sylvan Adams. Sylvan is a Canadian-born Israeli businessman, a philanthropist, an amateur cycling champion, and in recent years, he's become one of the most active and out-of-box philanthropists in the Jewish world. So, Sylvan, it's great to have you with us. You're speaking you for, to us. You've, Yaakov, yes. you forgot one thing. What did I forget? My new title. Yes. My new title on, on my business cards when I made Aliyah four and a half years ago, I had new business cards printed up with a title that reads, self-appointed ambassador at large for the state of Israel. So there you go, self-appointed ambassador at large for the state of Israel. You just wrapped up the Tour de France. We had the first Israeli cycler who was involved there. You were behind the scenes, the one who basically put it all together. How was it? Uh, it was magical. Um, forgetting the sporting side, because not everybody knows about cycling, but we had tens and tens of thousands of people on the sides of the road, French people, regular people, just sports fans, yelling because our name, our team name is Israel Startup Nation and yelling our team name, which is Israel, Israel, everybody knows us as Israel. Allez, 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 allez. From the side of the road, we felt the love from the French fans. It was magnificent. Wow. We, and you know, we had tens of thousands of fans on the road. We had hundreds and hundreds of millions of fans on the TV screens. And uh, they did vignettes about the team and we ride in the blue and white colors. No, it was, we were the, I would say we were the darlings of the tour. The really? tour is seen by 3.5 billion television viewers every year. This B is- Billion, gigantic. billion you said. Billion, billion, wow. yes. Wow, you know, but th this kind of falls into uh, a bunch of different things that you're involved in. You brought Messi to Israel, Space IL, you know, trying to get Israel to land on the moon, Madonna for the Eurovision, the gyro, which I remember watching as they cycled through the streets of Jerusalem. Well, what's the purpose of all of this, right? Well, why, why bother with something like all these different little projects? So, you know, I wouldn't call them little, by the way. Well, no, definitely <laughs> not little. Project. They're pretty big, yeah. And they're seen, they're seen by, my, my standard is hundreds of millions of people. So, so the, the idea behind this is the media coverage um, of Israel is almost universally negative. It's intense and it's negative. And so most people out there, what I call the silent majority, they, uh, they don't really care about us. But if you were if pressed to give an opinion, it would probably have a negative opinion of Israel because mm -hmm. of this media media cycle and portraying us as a conflict zone, and they'd have a very distorted view. Us journalists start forward. to blame that. That, that right. well, <laughs> I'm going to just say, well, no, you have to sell stories, and it's not interesting to say that the sun was shining over Jerusalem uh, today. And that's not a story. Right. So I'm not blaming I'm not blaming anyone, but the fact is. The Israel that I moved to four and a half years ago is nothing like what's portrayed in the media. And I'm trying to give a taste of the, the real Israel, the normal Israel, as I, as I call it, um, to those, to what I call the silent majority out there that don't really care. They're not political. They're just regular sports fans or culture fans or whatever, what, music fans, whatever they are, um, uh, astronomy fans uh, in the case of the Space IL project. 
uh, technology fans, whatever it is, um, just showing the real face of Israel, the contributions that we make to the world, that we come as uh, sportsmen, as, uh, as scientists, as musicians, as whatever we do, right. we come as a positive force uh, uh, to the world. And I, I'm just trying to show us as a normal country, and I know it's working. And when you say the three and a half billion people are watching an Israeli cyclist in the Tour de France, that just shows that Israel's like everyone else. That's it. All it is. Sadly, we have to fight just to be perceived as a normal country. And as I said, that silent majority, they have a, they, they're, get, they're getting their minds polluted by a bad media cycle and by the haters, you know, BDS and others who keep accusing us of all kinds of things. And I, I tried to, let's take the Giro, for example. The country was shown over four, over three glorious days, four including the presentation of the athletes. Um, from Haifa in the north all the way to Eilat in the south, they saw how beautiful, right. open, diverse, tolerant, uh, enthusiastic, um, uh, democratic, fiercely democratic, and most importantly, safe country that Israel is. And it took, we told our story over the heads of the media right to that silent majority, and they got a different impression, and I know we're changing minds and we're doing good work. And, and you know, you invest uh, through your philanthropy work uh, a lot in sports. There's the YMCA in Jerusalem, the Sports Research Institute at Tel Aviv University. What is it about sports that helps advance Israel specifically? How does it connect to people? So first of all, sports is the thing which is most widely viewed. And, and again, my, I'm trying to convince large numbers of people and sports fans are not political. This is This is very typical. And uh, I'm trying to convince large numbers of people. Sports is a, an avenue. It's a vehicle. Uh, I call it a diplomatic tool. Uh, when Nixon went to China, it, I don't know if you're, if you, you recall that they sent ping pong players uh, 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 right. back and forth uh, before 1972. When he, so this sport diplomacy, I didn't invent it. Um, this is showing our true face again to, to very large audiences uh, of apolitical people who, who again, who, who are seeing Israel in a different light. And it's the silent majority. It really is the majority of the people. Right. I want to ask you, you gave a recent interview to the Jerusalem Post uh, on our uh, 50 most influential Jews that came out on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. And you spoke about boosting tourism. Now, Israel took pride in the fact that it had 4 million tourists. Now, of course, that's change with COVID, but you you shot to the, maybe this has to do with Space IL, you shoot to the skies, but you spoke about 14 million tourists coming to Israel. Now, to me, that's kind of hard to imagine with COVID, but I'm curious, what advice do you have to get from 4 million to 14 million? So again, uh, because of the Giro, I, I like, not because of the Giro, but the year of the Giro, 2018 to 2019, Israel was number one in the world in, in, in tourism growth. Uh, with 38% growth. Um, we are such an interesting country and they, we, we're not known. So it's easy to get to 14 million. Paris has 100 million uh, tourist visits. So uh, we're the Holy Land. We have the, we're the center for the three Abrahamic faiths. Um, we have so much to offer. We have such beautiful geography and we have such a, a, a diverse and, and, and a great variety of, of all kinds of uh, things. That and, and we're at the crossroads of and close by to Europe and others, other areas. And just the Jews are 14 million people uh, in the world. Well, we have uh, six, uh, six or seven million Israelis, but just just American Jews are six million. So. Uh, it's easy to see how we can get right. to, uh, to, to, to to a much, much bigger number. Uh, and I said 14 because it was four. I added 10. Uh, <laughs> but listen, I'm an ambitious person and I truly believe we can reach it. So uh, we, need more, we need more hotels. So before. <laughs> well, that's true. But before we wrap up, no one's listening. It's just me and you. What's next? What's the next big, big project? So here, here's the thing. I have a bunch of irons in the fire. I tend not to... Uh, talk about things that aren't, you know, that haven't been concluded because I've got a bunch of things and not everything comes to fruition. So I don't like to get people's expectations up. 
And also my credibility is at stake. When I say I'm going to do something, it happens. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put you on hold for okay. that one. You'll have to stay tuned and uh, and, and wait until the, the projects are Well, based on what we've seen until now, Sylvan, we look forward to seeing what comes next. I want to thank you very much for being with us. My slogan, yes. my slogan is I'm just getting started. Okay. So Israel's <laughs> self-appointed ambassador at large, Sylvan Adams, thank you very much for being with us at the Jerusalem Post Conference. Thank you, Yakov.